In this lesson, we'll cover the differences between plaster and fiberglass for splinting. Both of these products do the same thing. They allow you to create a custom fitting splint for patients. In reality, the main difference is accessibility. Fiberglass is much more expensive, so most medical facilities are more likely to have plaster. I personally prefer fiberglass because it's much faster and cleaner to prepare than plaster. The fiberglass material comes in a big roll, which will be in packaging that looks something like this. When you open the material, you'll notice that it incorporates fiberglass and padding in one piece. Fiberglass also comes in a variety of sizes depending on width. So first, you'll have to select the correct size. After you cut it to the desired length and remove it from the airtight packaging, the fiberglass activates with the moisture in the air or even with some small amount of water that you can add from a tap. It's going to harden in minutes and become warm in the process. There are some few pearls of wisdom I've learned over the years working with this product. The first pearl is to be sure to have all the equipment ready before you add water and harden the splint. We'll cover all the materials you'll need later in this chapter. The second pearl is that after you've cut off the length you need, be sure to seal the rest of the container to avoid having hardened splint materials for the next time you need it. And the third important pearl relates to the fact that the dried fiberglass ends are sharp and will irritate or even cut your patient's skin. To avoid this from happening, the padding should be stretched over the cut ends of the fiberglass. Now let's talk about plaster. It comes in rectangular strips coated with calcium sulfate, which harden when water is added. You'll have to measure out the length you need and cut the strips to the appropriate size. Stack a minimum of eight layers on top of each other to get a strong splint. Then the plaster layers are submerged in a bucket of water. This is an exothermic reaction. You'll notice that the material gets warm as it stiffens. You can use warm water if you want the plaster material to harden more quickly. Using cold water will allow more time for the plaster to set. The trick is to get the excess water out and smooth the plaster over the bucket to keep it from making a mess. My issue with plaster is that it's messy. The white chalky liquid that drips is really annoying. The other actually more important issue is that the residual water and calcium should not be poured down into a regular drain. It can harden the pipes and cause significant plumbing issues, so be sure to dispose of the excess liquid properly according to your local guidelines. So now you understand fiberglass and plaster. In the rest of this chapter, we'll learn how to make splints with them. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.